making judgment. Can we judge or not? Because I hear the same many times people will say, oh, don't judge me. Is that really so? Well, let's do some Bible study and see what the Word of God says about this subject matter. Starting in Matthew chapter 7, we're going to look at verse 1 to 5. It says, Judge not that ye be not judged. It continues. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thy own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thy own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. So, pretty much what um, this is saying is that um, for you to make a judgment, and if you are going to make a judgment, you are to judge righteous judgment. Now, in order, order for you to make a judgment, you got to make sure that you're clear. You see? You cannot be living in sin and then trying to judge another person. Because a person can be a thief and you can be um, a child molester and then the thief is trying to um, correct the child molester. It's like, do you see um, the, hypo the hypocrisy there? In order to make a judgment, you have to be living a holy life. And if you are going to make a judgment, you have to judge righteously. Because the scripture tells us that grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. He came to save us. He came to bring everlasting righteousness. So let's let's see an example of um, righteous judgment. Let's go to Matthew, uh, I mean John, chapter eight, and we're going to look at verse one to eleven. It says, "Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him." And he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as thou as though he heard them not. So when the when they continue asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a, st a stone at her. Verse eight. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the least. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself, and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Had no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So here in this very act of Jesus, we see righteous judgment being taken place. Um, because when this, this woman, she being caught in adultery, um, they said the very act. Now it takes two people to commit adultery. One person cannot commit adultery of themselves. So you can see um, not only the, the hypocrisy there, but the unrighteous judgment 
and the deception in these very verses. So, in order for us to judge, and we are to judge righteously, we have to be living a holy life. We're in that time where we cannot be playing church no more. We cannot be having a form of godliness. Because the whole objective of the devil is that he wants to keep everybody in sin. So therefore, no one has any grounds to stand on to speak again that which is wrong. You see, because if he has us all in sin, it's like, who are you or who am I to say anything? I'm practicing sin also. But you see, once you give your heart to God, to God once you be, um, become the servant of the Lord or a, ch a child of God, God is expecting you to live a righteous and a holy life. And if you are to judge and make judgment, you are to make righteous judgment. And we see the perfect example of that in the life of Christ, especially in these verses here with the woman taken in adultery. So now let's um, switch gears a bit. So there is two things. There is judgment and there is condemnation. And we have that confused because according to the scripture, we are to judge and to judge righteous judgment. We are not to condemn. Those two things are different. Because think about it. If we're all saying that, oh, we should not judge or don't judge me, you might as well take away the court system and let everybody run wild. If we're not to judge, we make judgment every day. You wake up in the morning, it's pretty much a, a decision. You either choose to do this and choose to do that. You assess the situation or you assess the, the information and you make a proper, proper judgment. That's a big difference from condemnation. Condemning a person, that's where the problem is. Because if you look at John 8, verse 1 through 11, Jesus did not condemn that woman. But well, here's an important point I want you to catch. In verse 11, he says, She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Don't miss that. Go and sin no more. The Bible says Jesus came to save us from our sins. From our sin. Not in our sin. He came to save us from our sins. Do you want to know something very serious? The devil is trying to have men and women to die in their sins. He's trying to take them out while they're in sin. Do you know what happens when you die in your sin? With that accepting Jesus and putting away your sin. It's over. You're going to be waking up to that second resurrection. To meet that final judgment. The devil is trying to keep us in our sin. The life. The death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Has been given to us for free. He paid a price, so you do not have to be condemned. But you can receive life eternal. I pray we take that into consideration and really examine these things. But um, going back to our study, we were talking about judgment, making judgment. Are we to judge or no, according to the Bible? Yes, we are to judge because another verse in the Bible says, um, know you not that we should judge angels. And then in, I believe 1 Corinthians chapter 6 or 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 
it talks about let me see if I can find it really fast let me see if I can find it It says, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to the law, go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints should judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to, un to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? The Bible is very clear. We are, to, we are to judge, and we are to judge righteously. But here's the, kick, uh, here's the kick, uh, kicker. In order to do so, Christ has to be living in you. You have to be living a righteous life. You can't be living in sin and wanting to speak against sin. And then the other point was condemnation. We are not to condemn anyone. Those are two different things. Two completely different things. Lord's willing. Till next time. One more uh, important point about uh, judgment, the subject of judgment. In the book of Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 23, the Bible says, But if thine eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? So you see, that's why it's very important that we not only profess Christianity, but we walk in the light even as he is in the light. Because just that little cherished sin, that one thing, blurs up your vision. Therefore, you're not able to make proper um, judgment. Let's look at another uh, verse. Why? It's very important not to play with sin. And what are the conditions that um, we're facing right now? In Isaiah 60, verse 2, it says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people you hear that darkness should cover the earth and gross darkness the people it's very very important that we allow, allow Jesus Christ in our whole heart allow the spirit and the word to wash us make us clean purges of sin that we see sin as a very dangerous thing and that is no toy to play with. And therefore, as we walk in the light, we're gonna be able to see properly to make righteous judgment and not to condemn. God bless you.